face the darkness. Cut them from this world. Suffer eternally. The light is fading. Hey guys, welcome back to a new guy video. Today I'll show you how to play Nocturne Mid. So Nocturne can be played as an assassin and as a bruiser. Right now the bruiser version is what's really OP in the mid lane, so that is the one I'll be showing in this video. His passive guides will make his next auto attack deal damage in an area around him and also heal him. And when you auto attack guys then you uh, make this passive come off cooldown faster. But if you auto attack champions or monsters then it will come off cooldown even faster. Now this passive right here is what makes him such a strong mid laner because it allows him to have wave clear. So when you want to push you just stay in the middle of the wave and then use that passive. And since it also heals you then it's also really hard to poke you out at the same time because you have great wave clear and you also have a lot of sustain. And your Q uh, is a skill shot that will um, throw this trail behind. And if you stay inside that trail guys then you get bonus movement speed and you also get a ton of AD. And if you hit an enemy champion with it then they will leave this trail behind them. So you can use that to uh, chase people down with when you get that bonus uh, movement speed. Your W is your... Um, Spell shield pretty much, it will block the next incoming ability. And if you do manage to block an incoming ability, then the passive attack speed you get from this uh, ability here, you'll get a lot more temporary attack speed. Like as soon as you put a point into that W, then you already get some passive attack speed. And when you block out an ability, then you get even more attack speed pretty much. That's how it works. And then your E it is that tiller. That would deal magic damage to the enemy champion and if they don't break that setup then it's also uh, going to fear them at the end. So that's like your uh, main CC ability. Fear them and slow them as well so when you fight and such if you can manage to proc this E right here then you're pretty much going to win every single fight. So as for how you want to play Nocturne in the laning phase, it's very different, but depending on a melee or a ranged matchup. But you basically just want to AFK push all the time. Of course, into ranged matchups, it can be very hard at the start to just chill out for a bit until you get a couple items. So just playing this AFK pushing style, that's what makes Nocturne really good. You just AFK shot the wave, and then once you hit level 6, then you look for a room in the side lane. So unless people try to fight you, uh, which they will not most of the time because Nocturne is really strong in 1 vs 1, so you just FK push and then you just hover around the river. You see if something is happening or is about to happen and then you will be able to move faster than the enemy laner. So this champion is really really simple to play and he's also super strong at the same time, in the mid lane especially. He's also good as a jungler but really OP as a mid laner right now. So we have the whip right now, the component towards the stride breaker. So the moment you get this item here, then you have insanely good wave clear because you combine this active with your passive and it just can instantly delete the waves. But this is what makes Nocturne extremely good in the mid lane because he has access to do so much wave clear. Now you can pretty much start your AFK pushing uh, playstyle, you just stay in the middle of the wave, use the passive and then you follow up with that weird back to as well and just gonna insta show. See that background minion just died instantly. One passive and one active from that item and that wave or cast a creep wave is gone. Now we got the ultimate up, first cast guys is going to apply near side to the enemy champion so it's very hard for them to see the allies. And the second part will make you dash toward the target. So since it applies near side, it makes it very hard for our teammates to protect their allies. 
So it makes Nocturne really good at disrupting the entire enemy team. So they can't really see what's going on, so... You are really really good at getting into the backline. Of course, the moment you have this ultimate up, then you pretty much want to use it off cooldown. So you can snowball yourself, and also because you have ultimate hunter in the domination tree, so you want to get that stacked as soon as possible as well, so... This ultimate comes on an even lower cooldown. We just have keep push and we need to look for a uh, roam in the side lane. If we can't roam, then we can just find the enemy jungler. The rip off is up, so we basically just camp in that brush right here and then wait for him. Use that W to block Fizz's ultimate as well. And that turned into a free double kill. Now what a lot of uh, mid lane Nocturne players like to do is that when they have that ultimate up, they ward the red buff, wait for the enemy jungler to appear and then you just fly in with that ultimate. You destroy them, you take away the red buff as well and that is 100% going to tilt them. Extremely fit right now. And Tristana got away with like 1 HP. Unfortunate, but that does happen. Now we have a lot of gold, so we also want to recall. So maybe stay for another wave right here. Because we have really good wave clear, so we can honestly just push this in instantly, and then we can recall. See how e easy it is to show in waves, guys. That's why he's so good. Just getting the components towards the whip or uh, the strike breaker and then we can get your city boots. I like these boots because you get that extra cooldown reduction on your summon spells and abilities as well including your ultimate so you can use that more often. And they're cheap to buy so a lot of the times when you don't have enough gold for the other boots you can opt for these. But if you're playing against a... Uh, and AD Assassin mid, then you can also go for the armor boots because that makes it even harder for them to trade against you. Really, really easy to push the waves. This is what we have to do the entire game. Roaming is what's um, one of the most OP things in solo queue, so if you play a champion who's really good at that, then of course you're gonna win a lot more. We didn't find anything right here, so we just took a turn around the jungle, get some vision down, and then go back to mid lane. So we know that Amu is topside right now. You see, while Fizz is stuck under the tower guys, I can just freely roam wherever I want to. He can follow up, but if he follows up, then he's going to lose the wave. So that's why it's difficult for the normal mid lane picks to do something about Nocturne. You have to pick something that can destroy him in lane. No, so other bruisers who can fight back, but... He does extremely well into uh, mages, immobile mages, you know, Syndra, Sarath, Six, Vilkos, Lux, and so on. That's why you really want to pick him, because once you use that ultimate and get within range, they can't really escape you. Especially not when you get to the side lanes after the mid game starts. And he does 100% dead, so that's why he does really well into those. But you know, against tanks and bruisers, he can't really do much. Oh, 
Oh, Fizz got the shot down from Miss Fortune. That's not very good. Giving the kills to the assassins. Something we want to avoid in the enemy team. Can't really do anything to us in the million though, so it doesn't really matter. Um, Nocturne is a really good pick into Fizz as well. Because he has to get within melee range to damage us, you know, burst us down. But the thing is, when you get within melee range of Nocturne, he's gonna destroy you in the extended fight. That's how it goes in every assassin matchup against Nocturne, so... And the thing is, if Fizz also engages, he has nothing to escape with, so he's gonna lose every single fight. We'll look for Rome topside. We want to fear him, so he walks back into Chogath, that's why I'm walking behind. Nice, as you can see, something like Mordekaiser can be really good into Nocturne. He almost took half our HP guys, and he was so really low HP to begin with. So if this was even, he could easily win this. So champions like Mordekaiser is really bad for Nocturne. He's gonna destroy you once he gets items, so even though we are fed, then he can still 1 vs 1 us, so... Mordekaiser is not something you want to be focusing down in fights. With our ultimate, we are looking to get the squishies. We want to get the AD carry, the mages, you know, the squishy junglers and such. We blocked out his ultimate with a W. That's of course a really nice ability for countering CC. You know, all that self-peel some champions have, you can deny them that. Just gonna head back mid, push out waves again, and then once we recall, we have enough for the most important core item. See, if he engages like this, guys, then he is completely doomed. How is he going to uh, win this fight? Because if he ever goes in, then that's a guaranteed fear from our E. Insta push the waves, get another point into that ultimate, we can also get a tower plate here. Because we see Amu top side, so this one is really free. We have a lot of gold right now, we want to push out this wave and we also want to recall, that's really important that you make sure that you use that gold you get. Right now we don't really have that big of a lead, because we haven't spent our gold yet. Taking away jungle camps is also rather easy because of your passive and it comes off cooldown much much faster when you auto attack monsters and champions so you can deny the enemy jungle his camps or you can use those to heal up with got the strike breaker guys so that is the most important core item that you want to be purchasing every single game until it gets nerfed it has extreme synergy with an auction because you get that extra slow and dash without active so you can use that strike breaker and then you can follow up with that E tether into fear and they will not be able to escape even though they have flash or movement abilities up because they'll be slowed then follow up with a fear and pretty much doomed at that point so that's why it's really really OP on him it's also what makes him really good because you also get that wave clear on top of it Thing is Mordekaiser has Riftmaker so it's still risky for us to try to fight him. But if we do it 2 vs 1 then it's a lot easier. We just follow up with Chain CC and this guy is doomed. But something, but if we fight a 1 vs 1 then Mordekaiser actually has a really really good chance against us even though we are super fat. Oh wow, I would actually alter this guy, but he was smart enough to get into the brush and recall. He's definitely recalling right now, so we're not gonna chase him. 
If he stood in vision for like 3 seconds longer, then I would have killed him. So that was a smart call by Fizz. He will use that fear and then follow up with that stride break active and he is not getting away at all. Now mid, to, mid lane Nocturne of course he has great wave clear and great roaming potential. And he's a lot better mid than top because when you're in the mid lane then you have much better access to the rest of the map. It's easier for you to look for roams in the bottom top side and even into the enemy jungle so you have a lot better access to the map when you play mid, mid lane. And that's very good for something that relies on roaming a lot, so a Nocturne. Because remember to stay in that trail because you get a ton of bonus AD guys, so that's really that really makes up for a lot of your damage. See, this right here is the problem. We are super fed, but something like Mordecai said Nocturne just can't deal with him. He's too tanky and he has a lot more damage, especially in his ultimate, so he's gonna destroy us in extended fights. The champions that are incredibly strong in extended fights, that's why Nocturne really struggles. So when you pick him, you want to pick him into squishy champions, uh, preferably. And also champions that will struggle escaping uh, your tether, your E. Well, we're gonna lose this tower here, or uh, maybe, probably not the next tower. And Tristan actually saved me right there, so that's pretty nice. When we engage with that ultimate, you want to go for the backline. Remember that the first part applies near vision to all targets, enemy targets, so that gives you a lot of time for you to jump into the backline and delete the squishy because before they get vision again. I ended up dying here, but my team is able to pick up uh, 3 kills, so it's actually super worth it. So that's gonna give us a free drake. And we didn't even have Chogath with us, so... This turned out to be pretty well, especially when you consider the fact that... The top waves are crashing into the towers, so they're also losing something topside. We can engage onto the backline right here. Of course, want to be focusing down the squishy targets, the backline carries, and the assassins if possible. You want to ignore the front line, you still play like an assassin, so you want to go for the squishy ones. Mordekaiser here was of course free to focus down because he was really low HP so it doesn't really matter but if he was even then we do not want to mess with this guy. Still don't have enough gold for the cleaver so just have to uh, farm up. I'm gonna take away the raptors here and then Phil gonna get the rip off. Should be giving that away to the ADC though. 
Plus Misfortune is really fat as well. We can just buy the components and then save up towards the cleaver. Once we have that, then we can shred the armor stacking opponents. You know, the Mordekaiser, the Amumu. Even Fizz has a lot of armor right now. For some reason, he also bought the armor boots. So he has the Seekers and the armor boots. So he also has a decent amount of armor. I just play in the side lane when possible. Once the middle tower is down, you just go to the side lane, get the waves, and then when once something happens, you have that ultimate to get within range. I'm straight in the middle of the entire enemy team and I still managed to tank for quite a while, so... Oh, nice, and our ADC survives, so that's perfect scenario for us. It doesn't matter if you die, just make sure that your carry stay alive and they can carry the fight. So with this build you're like a semi-tank, but you also have a lot of damage. That's why it's really good right now. You deny the assassins because they can never fight you, you are too tanky for them to mess with and at the same time you have a ton of damage as well. So you are still a threat to the entire backline. I'm gonna take the blue buff, that's going to be really nice, even though we have presence of mind, this definitely makes it easier. I just go back to the side lane. I'm gonna give this one away to Fiddle here, cause I don't really... I already took away some of his camp, so we don't want to deny this guy completely. We are still super far ahead, XP wise. And we can pick up another free kill right here because Fist is overextended. Use that W to counter his ultimate so he doesn't attach. It was super overextended, so that was super free for us. So we can just push bottom side. We still have that ultimate up, so if something happens, we can just fly straight in. We want to go for the backline if possible. Go for Tristana. You see, I'm disrupting the entire enemy team with that ultimate. And we pretty much took Tristana out of that entire fight. But she was focusing on escaping me and damaging me so my teammates could focus down the other targets. That's how you want to use Nocturne. Rip off is up as well. MF is not coming, so I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna take it. Just gonna see if there are any camps to take, otherwise, we can go top side. The Grump is up. Boss, make sure to take everything in your path so you don't. Ignore free gold. Because when you take away camps, then you also deny the enemy jungler. We have to get out of here because we're obviously getting flanked. Oh, I did not. I don't think it would be. Yeah, I missed that Q right there. Sucks. Lost the cannon minion. A lot of gold, so next item will be the guardian angel. Because you have enough damage, now you also need some safety. And you get both from this item here. It allows, allows you to dive in 1 versus 5 and then you can maybe get a kill and then you survive as well. 
so you'll be even better at tanking for your team. We can go ahead with the Baron right now, we already have the soul, so we're really tanky at this point. I don't know what Chogath is doing. Yeah, he was really tilted this game, so... That does happen, we're getting the Baron though. And we're almost at 16 as well. See, I'm ignoring everyone, I'm just gonna go for Tristana. We just want to AFK in a brush somewhere, wait for the fight. Just let them fight and then once you see the ADC, then just fly straight in, get the kill and finish them off. You're playing Bruce build, but you're also playing like an assassin. Guy is super tanky, it takes a while to take him down, but if we have misfortune with us, she's just gonna shred him. It's gonna break open the base here, get the inhibitor, and then we can also go mid. Go. Put two inhibitors down. Just want to get away right now. Or we can just destroy them as well. Our misfortune is just trading everyone on that side. But yeah, that was the Nocturne video. So thanks for watching and see you all in the next one.